How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing so good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Man, you're up there in Stockton, California. That that plays a big, big role in my heart because when I first got into radio, that's where I wanted to go do radio. They were always looking for radio people oh, in Stockton. So now, now here you are. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so cool. What What is Stockton like? Only because it really was that place that I wanted to go so badly as a kid because I was in Montana and I didn't want to go to Seattle. I didn't want to go to Spokane. And in and, and, and the trade, Stockton always was looking for somebody. But I never got the vibe to get there yet. Yeah. Um, as much as I love Stockton because it is my home city uh, where I grew up, I, I don't think it would be the best... Um, like place to live <laughs> i mean there's always you know the good and bad parts of this city but um there's definitely other cities that are so much nicer with a lot to do um so i actually moved out of stockton to um orange county california nice. so southern california um in laguna laguna Niguel now and it's so pretty here that whole entire California scene is, and if you if people have never been to California, it's like each section of that state has its own personality. So when you go down into Orange, Co- uh, Orange County, I mean, all of a sudden, it's like you can be as quacky as you want, but you're accepted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it definitely is like that. Um, but, but yeah, I definitely would choose Orange County over Stockton any day. It's just, <laughs> it's so beautiful here. Um, and, you know, Stockton is... Stockton is also known for having really, really good food, um, which is true. So the food is definitely better there than it is here, I would say. Wow. Um, But yeah. Wow. We have something in common, and I wish more people would talk about it. The songs we sang with our mothers while we were growing up. My the song that my mother sang with me was a cheap trick song. um, Ain't that a shame? And and you got to sing an Alicia Keys song with your mom. Yes. Yeah. Um, We are huge huge fans of alicia keys um my mom that was always her idol and then it um also became my idol so she would always sing um fallen by alicia keys every single day and she played the keyboard as well so um that's what i grew up listening to and i think that's what also sparked that music interested me at such a young age was listening yeah. to my mom what do, you, what do you think drew you to alicia keys because i see her as being somebody of total calm she knows where her calm is and it flows through her vocals yeah i i just she i love her voice mm-hmm. um and i she is so talented and she does have like a very soothing calm voice but also there's so much power in it too um and i've just i've always loved you know her writing um just everything about her i always wanted to play be able to play the piano like her like i just feel like she does it so effortlessly um you know and she and she still continues to do that so um yeah i don't know there's just something about her music and her voice that really really um just influenced me and my mom a lot. Oh my God. And the, and her, her speaking voice, because she is not afraid to, to <laughs> let that Southern come out of her. <laughs> yes, it is. It, she has such an amazing voice. And I, I love listening to her talk too. Do you, it's, do you, it's very soothing. Do you find yourself in a way that because you are a singer, that it also affects the way that you speak? Because I believe people speak out of tune and listening to you today, you are so perfectly in tune with your vocals. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've actually never thought about that. <laughs> well, you're you're aware of how you're putting the words out there, so it's almost like you know doing spoken poetry. Yeah. Oh well, thank you. I I've always felt like I've been so bad at speaking. <laughs> um, so I mean, that's a great compliment to hear this morning. When it being being as creative as you are, we all face that wall of burnout. How did you get through that storm? Because there's a lot of people that will say, "Oh, I've got writer's block." Really, there's no such thing as writer's block. You just you may have burnout, or you think what you're doing you suck. But it, but that's okay. Just learn how to do it really good. Yeah, um, it it was really challenging. Um, I think for me, you know, I, I was mostly going through that burnout in music because. Um, 
you know, the pandemic did have a big part of that, just not being able to perform. And then, of course, like I did feel like when I was trying to write, I was like, what do I even write about? Like I wrote about the same things over and over. And um, and then, of course, I had like my my tonsil surgery. So I got my tonsils and my adenoids removed. And after that, I had to fully retrain my voice. Yep. Um, and it was it was just something that got me down for so long because I'm – not a super patient person so I was like I want to sing I want to do a cover so bad and I can't um and I just felt like it was my time to give up music for not forever but for a while and um there was just something like I had my family of course he was telling me like never give up don't ever give up no matter what happens just keep trying it'll it'll happen for you. So they are big. They're big um, on making sure that I never give up on my music. Yeah. Um, and then I got this amazing opportunity with The Voice. Um, and that kind of just came to me too. It was more of like a, I think a scout found me. And um, they told me, you know, we, we want you to try to be on the show. And I was like, no, I don't think I'm ready for that. Oh, but. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought I wasn't ready. I was like, I have to fully retrain my voice before like I even try to do a show. Like there's no way I'm ready. And um my family came in again and they said, you know, the worst that could happen is you get a no, but never let a no stop you from trying again. Yeah. And um I really took that to heart and thought about that and I decided, you know, we're gonna give it another try and here I am. I got a chair turn. <laughs> I made it on the show. I won my battle. And I'm like, I'm so, so thankful for whoever was scouting me and also for my family for just pushing me to yeah. keep going. During that downtime, I believe that, you know, creativity is an addiction. You've always got to be creating something. What did you replace it with? In other words, the, the singing, what did you replace it with when you were down? Um... Honestly, when I wasn't singing, it was just really still music. It was listening to music. Um, and then I I honestly think that's it. I do also like to dance. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was a dancer when I was little. However, I feel like I'm not good at it anymore. Um, and I, I think I was kind of just going through so much. That I was like, okay, well, if singing isn't going to work out, do I want to be a dancer or do I want to be an actor? And um I did also sign up to start in like background acting. So that was another thing I was trying to like also get into because I always just felt like it had to be something in the industry. That's what sparks me a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I was trying to <laughs> just focus on something else, but it was also just listening to music every single day yeah. and practicing until I got it right. Even if it was, you know, a day where I was just like, oh, no, I, I'm not going to do this anymore. I can't get it right. It was like, you know, just taking a break, trying again. <laughs> so it's it's always been music no matter what for me. And then without music, it's just acting or some something, yeah. something cool. <laughs> How do you prep for a Pink song? When Because Pink is just, I mean, I was I was playing her music when she was just brand new. And to see what she has done with music, especially her live performance, I mean, how do you prepare for a Pink song? Well, let me say Pink is a powerhouse. Yes. So her songs are so, so hard to sing. Um, it was definitely a challenge for me. Um but I, you know, I, I like to say like, you know, with this journey, there come challenges and challenges that I'm willing to take. So um, I was very scared at first when I heard that we were going to sing this song. And then, um, it's just uh, I did so many vocal warm ups, which is something I never did before the show. Mm -hmm. um, it was very bad. <laughs> but um, I feel like doing those vocal warm ups every single day helped so much. Um, and then just, I honestly just, just telling myself like, you can do this. You're going to do this. Um, like don't get in your head too much. So yeah, it, it worked out pretty good. Um, and, uh, I love how the song ended up sounding after we sang it. And, uh, yeah. 
Wow. Finding that space in your heart to be a self motivator. A lot of people don't find that. They don't trust it. They don't, or if they do have it, they'll go, see, I told you I was going to let myself down, blah, 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 blah. And it becomes a day of doubt. How do you, how did you learn how to trust the self motivator? It was uh, very hard at first. Um, and I, I feel like I didn't really have that self motivation in the blind audition. Um, I kind of went out there and was just like, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it or not. And I kind of had that like doubt in my head, mm -hmm. but a little bit of positivity in my head also. So going into the battle rounds, I just really, really had to keep giving myself like a talk, um, whether it was like, in, you know, in my room, just like you, you can do this. You're going to do this. You've done this so many times. Um, you know, the only thing that's different is your, doing this on TV, which is big, but that was also another, um, form of motivation for me. It was just like, you know, on TV, you don't want to mess this up either. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, it's just, I honestly just had to look myself in the mirror and just talk to myself, like speak positivity, positive affirmations. Um, I love to pray before performance mm -hmm. also, and just make sure, you know, I have God by my side. <laughs> so um, that's another thing too, is just, it's just really trying to be positive and um, just telling myself over and over that I can do this and I will do this and um, whatever happens, happens. See, so, yeah. I, I believe that that's exactly the way the modern church is supposed to be, that, that God is putting you out there in front of people because it's not about the four walls of the building. It's about the entire mm -hmm. people as a whole. And so you being out there as a tool and putting that energy inside your heart before before you you know set free your vocals, oh, it's a beautiful place to be. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. So now one thing that we have in common, we come from families of eight. How did you ever get along with everybody in that family? Well, first, that is so cool that you also come from a family of yes, eight. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, I think for me, so I am the oldest. Um, so I'm also kind of like another mom to yep. all of my siblings. Um, and... There were times where we would argue, but I think because there's such a big age gap, um, like it's, I have a brother who's um, a couple years younger than me, but we weren't always very, very close until now. And now we don't ever really argue. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like me and my sister, my next sister, she, we are seven years apart. And um, whenever we would argue, my mom would just be like, why are you arguing with like a little girl, like you're so much older than her. <laughs> um, and um, it's still like that. Like I, I have a brother, uh, my youngest brother, we're 18 years apart. Wow. And um, we do argue too sometimes, but at the same time, I feel like I'm also another mom to them. And um, so they do look up to me um, as, a, as their second mom and they have referred to me as their second mom too, yeah. uh, which is so sweet. So we do didn't always argue there were time like little moments where you know i would tell them to do something and they would just like roll their eyes at me or be like <laughs> kind of give me that thing like well you're not my mom but then say like you know you are like my mom so it would be a little confusing sometimes but um i mean, i love having so many siblings mm -hmm. it's uh it could be a lot at times, like especially during Christmas, you know, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't change it for the world. And um, I, I love I love them so much. And they all look up to me a lot um, just as a, a role model also, uh, which is so cool. Yeah. The one thing you missed out on, though, the hand me down. We all got the hand me down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My sisters still get the hand me downs for me. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean I, think I got like i got a lot of the stuff that wasn't in style like as a kid i look back at pictures and i'm like oh my gosh mom why would you dress me in that but i feel like that's a lot of people um and now my sisters are you know they're they're wearing the same things that are in style nowadays because they're getting older yep. um so they're they'll wear stuff that i wear and i'm just like you guys are so lucky you're not <laughs> in anything right now that's like so outdated or you know doesn't look good on you <laughs>
So were you pretty much like our family? We had one bathroom and we had to have, I mean, when it came time to getting ready for school, I mean, it was like, oh my God, it was like traffic jam. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had, we had, I think three bathrooms Lucky in our, our first house that we were in. Um, but there was always just that one main bathroom that like the middle bathroom in the hallway that all of the kids would share. So <laughs> there have definitely been times where I was like, oh my gosh, are you done taking a shower? Like I need to go in there. Or, you know, somebody was always waiting for something because, you know, my mom's bathroom, like she would be using that to get ready too. Mm-hmm. And then it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. <laughs> I know we started talking about uh, today about radio and how I wanted to go to Stockton, but one of the things I really wanted to give you a compliment on is the fact that you allowed local radio where you are to help support your gift and get it out there. And and that is so mm-hmm. beautiful because that connection between the musician, and the local musician as well as local radio, you don't see much of that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love our um, Stockton radio station so much. Um, uh, They've always been a huge support of mine. Um, and uh, I think I think actually ever since maybe 11 or 12, they started reaching out to me like, hey, do you want to perform yes. at um, you know this festival or any place that they could get me on a stage? They would reach out to my mom um, and say, you know, we have a, um, an opening if she wants to come perform. And my mom would be that person be like, you're going to do it. Yeah, like whether you're <laughs> nervous, you go out there because this is your dream. Um, and so they put me on many stages throughout um, the 209 area over there. And um, I couldn't be more grateful for that because that has definitely helped get me where I am today, just being able to perform and um, not, you know, be so shy like yeah. how I used to be so it was um it was great it was a great experience and i'm so thankful for them and i hope that i can continue to go back and still perform wherever they need me to absolutely where can people go to find out more about you and give you lots of love um i would say definitely on instagram that is where i am most active uh it's at zaya ray music and zaya z-e-y-a um I definitely try to respond more on there to people, and I that's where I see a lot of the comments, too. Um, and then just also Facebook, Zary Music as well, and then TikTok. Yeah. So, um, yeah, wow. all the social media platforms. <laughs> well, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Zaya. Thank you so much. It was so, so nice to talk to you today. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. You too. I hope you have an amazing day. Same to you. Same to you. Thank you.